Victoria 3, the ultimate grand strategy game with immeasurable ambition. Its diplomacy is the most in-depth yet, its economics will take hundreds of hours to learn, and its warfare system is completely revolutionary for a Paradox title. But it doesn't go far enough. This is what Paradox needs to do to warfare after Victoria 3's launch for it to become a masterpiece. Firstly, I understand that Victoria 3 had to release before Christmas for business reasons, so all the suggestions I will make will be things Paradox should do after the release of the game. War needs improving. I support the dev's decision to exclude micromanageable armies on the map which the player will control like pieces on a board. This decision works better for the game as it makes it feel more like a society builder where you are not in total command of the military, but a gardener for your nation. War is still very important though, and there are corners that have been visibly cut in the development of the military system in Victoria 3, which makes warfare too simple. Goods, more specifically military goods, are what fuel your war machine both figuratively and literally. You would think that if you made more guns, for example, than you needed at a specific time, then you could stockpile them for when you need to give half a million mobilised peasants a weapon if war breaks out in the future. This is certainly what countries did and still do now. It's common sense. You keep valuable goods until you need them. This is true for gold in the game, but not for military goods. If you go to war in Victoria 3, then you need to buy or quickly produce all the equipment you need. And you can't even do this in a diplomatic play because there is no way to store military goods at all. This is a significant problem. Implementing a mechanic of good storage which includes military goods will make the game more complicated, but it will also create more interesting political scenarios as well as increasing the motive for players to think more carefully on what they do because it will give an advantage to the player who has better prepared for war which will make multiplayer more strategic and tactical. A mechanic for storing military goods will allow for nations who do not produce many weapons to support friendly nations by lend leasing some of their stored military goods. Talking about lend leasing, this is also not represented in the game, as far as I know, which is a great shame because I think a lend leasing system would do wonders for the geopolitical makeup of each campaign. It would be another tool which you and the AI can use which will give the game more flavour. Modelling this mechanic of Hearts of Iron 4's lend lease system will be good but instead of a country giving military goods for free, it will be transferred in exchange for debt. The country giving the resources can forgive the debt to help the allied nation, but it's a gamble, because you're betting on the country you're backing winning that war. If they do, they will most likely pay you back with interest, meaning you will make money or you can exchange the debt for obligations, the strength of the obligations being determined by the amount of debt you forgive, so you will gain influence over that nation to do with it as you desire. If the nation you are lend leasing to loses, they may go bankrupt, so you will lose money, but this is better than getting involved in the war directly, where the risks are higher. You could always go to war with the country you previously backed to get your money back. Now let's move on to actual war itself. Like I said in the beginning, I support the fact that you can't move around individual armies, but I still think that being able to see these armies is crucial, and these armies should have a location which you can see at all times. There are many ways this can be done. It would fix the problem with generals and figuring out what generals to use because their traits may come in handy 
and would mean that you can observe the war more closely, therefore know exactly where to send reinforcements and supplies. This can be done with a separate war map mode or just in the main map itself. The UI for this should be modelled in the way history videos are, but with the Victoria 3 style. To manage this, there needs to be a chain of command in the army, more advanced than the system Victoria 3 already has. Even if the devs don't show the armies in depth on the map, a command structure will still add flavour to generals as well as making the game more realistic as armies always had a command structure including in the Victorian time. This could be inspired by Hearts of Iron 4 but I think a different kind of system is needed. I propose a military command centre which will be on the map and will move depending on the front line. The command will exist in times of peace in the capital, but be moved close to the front lines when war begins. When a diplomatic play starts, the generals which make up the command structure will suggest as a unified body by the traits and interest groups they belong to how much men you should mobilise, so it can be biased. In the last part of the diplomatic play, the central command will produce a war strategy which will be in stages and include stuff like advance this way and take this city and this will all be displayed on a command map mode. You as the ruler can accept the proposal, edit it or demand that they make a new one which can take some time. The generals in charge of the central command can refuse your edited plans based on their interest group and traits as well as their opinion of you, which may require you to fire some generals. But if these generals you fire belong to a powerful interest group, this may cause problems. Circumstances in the war will change. When they do, the generals in the command centre will propose a reformed war strategy and this will act in the same way. You as a player can edit the war plan which then has to be accepted by the generals. Because your nation is at war, you can edit the war plans at any point, but yet again, every edit has to be accepted by the command centre. I think a good way of balancing this would be that you, the player, can force through an edited version of the war plans if they refuse by using authority, but the generals who refuse in the command centre will get a worse opinion of you, which can affect how the war plays out. This proposed mechanic will replace the advance, standby and defence system Victoria 3 already has. The current system is too simple, and the war strategy mechanic I propose will solve this. It will make generals more important, it will engage the player more, and it will make Victoria 3 feel like a grander, more in-depth paradox title. Those were just some ideas of mine. Please comment if you agree, disagree, or have found some theoretical holes in my suggestions. Watch this video here for more Victoria 3 content. See you there.